Bible and read on with them. Acts chapter 18 and verse 24. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more perfectly or more accurately. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Touch us in a powerful way. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to speak to you the way of God more accurately. It says that Aquila and Priscilla took Apollos, who was a, a mighty man. It says regarding a, Apollos that he was born in Alexandria, Egypt, but he was eloquent and he was mighty in the scriptures. He was a mighty man of God. But yet he hadn't heard about the Holy Spirit. And so he was preaching without the baptism and the Holy Spirit. And this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of God, though he knew only the baptism of John. And the baptism of John, John was the last Old Testament uh, preacher. And as a result, he preached the law and he preached repentance from sin, and he preached baptism in water. But what did John the Baptist say? There's one coming after me who's mightier than I, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to bend down and unloose, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John's baptism was a baptism of water, but Jesus' baptism was a baptism of fire. One is water, one is fire. One is ceremonial and one is experiential in your soul. One is on the outside of your body, the other is on the inside of your body. One is on the flesh, the other is on the spirit. One is just ceremony, but the other is a life-changing experience. And so it says that he knew about the John the Baptist and he preached that gospel, but then they took him aside and explained the word of the Lord more accurately or more completely to him. And no doubt, Apollos was filled. It doesn't say it, but it implies that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit baptism made the difference in the book of Acts. For see, the book of Acts is really just the chronology. It's just the account of the different things that were done by the disciples under the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the power of the Holy Spirit. We are fueled. Our fire is the Holy Spirit. What makes us go is the Holy Spirit. What gives you and I strength is the Holy Spirit. What makes the church different from any other institution in the world is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes us what we are. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we have just religious, dead religious exercises. But when the Holy Spirit of God comes into a church, the Holy Spirit does holy things. He does supernatural things. And so it says the way of God more accurately. And I want to speak to you about three things that make us accurate in the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? First of all, You know, the reasons we are more accurate is that we are fighting fire with fire. We have an enemy that is supernatural and invisible. In fact, he is a spirit. Lucifer is a fallen angel and he works in the spirit realm. You don't see demons just walking up and down the street. They're spirits. The the demonic underworld is a spiritual place. It's real, but it's spiritual. Our enemy is not flesh and blood, but our enemy is spirits. Wicked principalities and powers that are organized on this earth to destroy human beings. Our enemy is a spirit, and in order to fight something with spirit, it has to be fought with the spirit. Amen. And so the spirit of a person fights, and the Holy Spirit in that person, fights the spirit of darkness. We're fighting fire with fire. If you try to use flesh and fight a spiritual problem, you will be defeated every time. David tried to put on Saul's armor and it was so heavy he couldn't even move. And he said, these things are not spiritual. I haven't tested them in the 
battle of conflict. But he said, I know what the power of God is on my slingshot. So let me go out and fight against a nine foot giant with the power of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't anything but the Holy Ghost that knocked that giant down. He threw that rock at that big old giant and it hit in one place. Why? Because the Holy Ghost has the best GPS guidance system and he hit that thing and knocked him down and the power was effective. The victory was effective. The, the victory was complete because the Holy Spirit, David knew the power of the Holy Spirit and he was energized by the power of the Holy Spirit. The flesh will never work against the Spirit. That thing that's got your teenager bound up, that problem with, with, with family members and those problems that are going on and they're in sin, that's a spiritual problem. There's a demon that's driving what they're doing. The spirit of rebellion, the Bible says, is witchcraft. It is a demonic entity that works against the people uh, that are on this earth. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. What's causing these people to go into public schools and shoot them up? What's causing all this mass killing that we're seeing? Let me tell you, there was a door open into the life of those men and they opened that door up to demonic powers uh, and Satan got a foothold in the minds of those people and finally he grows in them until he gets complete access and they do his bidding. For Jesus said that Satan and Lucifer is a killer, a robber and a destroyer. That's his MO. That's who he is. That's what he does. He kills and robs and destroys. And if you're going to fight against a spirit that kills, robs and destroys you're not going to do it in the flesh. You need something better than the Betty Ford Clinic. You need something stronger than the 12 step program. You need something that's better than some of these $30,000 a month rehab places over here in Malibu and in Beverly Hills that try to rehabilitate these drug encrusted uh, stars that walk around like zombies because they're so bound and addicted by drugs and alcohol. Friend, it takes something great and it's the Holy Spirit. When you get full of the Holy Spirit as a child of God, there is not a weapon. There is not a device. There is not an enemy. There is not a demon. Lucifer himself and all of his cohorts cannot stand against the weakest child of God who is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You're fighting fire with fire. You're fighting spirit with spirit. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Like it or not, we're locked in war. We're locked into combat. We're fighting head to head, hand to hand, and shoulder to shoulder against a power of full darkness that pervades this whole world. He's after your kids. He's after your grandkids. He's after your marriage. He's after you. He has laid uh, vast plans and he's doing everything within his power to unravel and destroy your life. And there's only one thing that is powerful enough to stop the, pl the powers of darkness and it's to fight fire with fire, spirit with spirit. Said, can I hear an amen? The flesh can never fight the spirit. The seven sons of Sceva, the son of a preacher. You know, they were sons of a of one of the rabbis. They saw, they, they had enough religion to know what church was about. And they went out and tried to cast the devil out of a man that, that they saw the disciples casting devils out. And they didn't have the, the inworking of the Spirit of God. They just had the name. They just knew what to say. And so they go out and they start trying to cast the devil out of a man. And what happens? The demon comes out of the man and jumps on those seven sons and sends them running down the road, tears their clothes off, beats them up. They got gashes and they're wounded. Why did they get wounded? Why did they get gashes? Because they were trying in the flesh to do what only the Spirit of God in us can do. I want to challenge every person that's non-speaking in tongues to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. Don't let this service close. Don't let this sun go down today until you're talking in tongues, endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Walk into your house full of the Spirit. Walk into your place 
place of conflict full of the Spirit of God. If you get full enough of the Holy Ghost, you can challenge and change any situation that's around you. We're not going to let the enemy browbeat us and hamper us and hinder us until we get so discouraged we throw up our hands and say, what's the use? Nothing's ever going to change. I challenge you to come back to the altar of God. I challenge you to come down here and get anointed with oil. I challenge you to let some of these holy rollers lay hands on you today and get you full of the Spirit of God so that you can walk out of here talking in tongues and destroying the works of the devil. That's what the anointing is for, is to destroy the works of the devil. Alcohol can't stand against the Holy Ghost. Uh, cocaine can't stand against the Holy Ghost. Heroin can't stand against the Holy Ghost. You need to make those cigarettes bow to the Holy Ghost and let God do what he can do. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. But I like it in the living Bible even better. It says we are human, but we don't wage war with human plans and methods. And some of you here today, you've been doing the best you can to wage war for a good cause with human plans and methods. And I tell you today, stop it. You need to quit. You need to throw up your hands and quit trying to change. You need to quit making phone calls. You need to quit conjoling and whining and talking and trying to make things change in the flesh. Turn them over to God. Get on your knees and go to the prayer closet and go up into the heavenlies and bring down the Holy Ghost hound from heaven and let Him, let him work on them until they get so miserable they can't sleep at night. Till they get so miserable, they lose their job. They may have to go to the hospital and have a gown with the back out of it. Lay in the bed a few days up there in the hospital. Whatever it takes, God, go get them. Sick them, Lord. Somebody say amen. God knows the buttons to push. He knows the bells to ring. He knows the arguments to use. He knows how to bring people into submission to the will of God. And if you go after it spiritually, God will start working. Fight fire with fire. Look at somebody and tell them, fight spirit with spirit. Hallelujah. The Living Bible says, we are human, but we don't wage war with human plans and methods. We use God's mighty weapons, not mere worldly weapons, to knock down the devil's strongholds. Somebody say amen. Number two, why the Holy Spirit makes you more accurate is because the Holy Ghost makes future reality of heaven a present reality in Bellflower. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes the future reality of heaven a present reality right now today. How many of you would like to go to heaven? Especially compared to the other option. How many of you would like to go to heaven this morning? Bring the guy out with the six shooter and start popping him. No, we don't want to go that way. We don't want to go on the next load. But you know, we can have a little heaven right here that will give us the strength to keep fighting the good fight. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all cross-bearing. It's not all fighting. It's not all negative. It's not all war. There's joy in the journey. And the joy in the journey is the Holy Ghost in the journey. The thing that makes it great and exciting is the Holy Spirit. You know, Pastor Mafoy, when he was here last week, he said, I want you to do the Holy Spirit conference again this summer. And I said, Brother, I've done it for years. And I did it the last summer. And this, I think... Summer before, before that. And I said, uh, you know, I said, I don't want to wear out with the people. Maybe I should take off and not do it this summer and maybe come next summer. He said, well, it's up to you, but I don't understand that argument. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the, the thing that makes it good is the Holy Ghost in you. It's not you. The thing that makes it real, makes it exciting, makes it good is the Holy Ghost in you. He said, just make sure you come over here prayed up talking in tongues. Somebody say amen. 
How many of you know if I'm a good preacher, I'm a good preacher because I bring the Holy Spirit? The only thing good in me is the Holy Ghost in me. The only thing that's special in me is the Holy Ghost in me. The thing that makes me good is the Holy Spirit. The thing that makes you good is the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. And the Holy Spirit sitting in His chair of honor this morning and He's manifested the presence of God and He's here for every one of you this morning. Somebody say, He's here for me. Yes, He is. And the Holy Ghost makes the future reality of heaven a present reality and experience. God knows we are thrust into a hostile world full of visual and tactile seductions. All five of our senses are assaulted by this world that's full of hostility towards our walk with God. Satan offered Jesus a real kingdom when he offered him the kingdoms of the world. That was no hoax. That was a real offer. I will give you the kingdoms of the world if you will bow down and worship me. Lucifer still owns the kingdoms of this world. Someday he'll give up the reins of control and Jesus will rule for eternity. But until that time, Satan offered Jesus a real kingdom but he didn't do it without preparation and what was Jesus preparation he was driven by the spirit into the wilderness to be alone with the Holy Spirit for 40 days and 40 nights I say if we get alone with the Holy Spirit enough there's not Lucifer himself that can test us or tempt us to fail somebody say amen you get enough of heaven you'll stop loving the world somebody say amen the Holy Ghost makes future reality of heaven a present reality experience. Why were people running around the building this morning? They were feeling heaven. They feel heaven in their soul. Why did you run around the building, Vinny? Felt the presence of the Lord and the joy of the Lord. Somebody say, man. Hallelujah. Number three, the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 16, he said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. And the helper, the word there in Greek is a loss. And it means one besides me. And in addition to me, but one just like me. And what Jesus was saying is, the Holy Spirit will do in my absence what I would do if I were physically present with you. The Holy Ghost is a restorer of the lost heritage. He gives back what the enemy has stolen from you. Somebody say amen. The Holy Ghost gives you the ability to grant people grace. And the Lord gave me this this week for the church. He said, tell them the marriage relationship is the highest level of spiritual warfare on the earth. The, the marriage, your marriage is the highest place of spiritual warfare. The devil, if you're married, the devil is after your marriage. And we need to wise up. And we need to go to war for our marriages. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Well, I just married beneath me. Don't be so sure. Take another look in the mirror today. You know, if God puts you two together, then you've got a gift from the Lord. <laughs> I didn't hear one amen. It's quiet. I said, if God put the two of you together, then you've got a gift from the Lord. Amen. Stay married. Stay in your covenant. Stay in your relationship. Because the highest level of warfare, the devil goes after that marriage relationship more than anything else. Make up your mind, I'm married to the grave. I feel so alone up here. <laughs> Till death do us part. Well, it sure isn't what I thought it was going to be. No, but you signed a contract. Till death do you part. So you stay hooked up. And you stay in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will give you the grace. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me this to th this week. He said the highest, okay. He said uh, the highest level of spiritual warfare. Okay, the gap between what you expect and what you get.
the gap between what you expect, what you want, and what you get is where grace comes in. Well, my spouse is just not meeting my needs. Well, they're just not the same that when I married them. You know, it's funny. When people, two people get married, a young man and woman, the man gets married at that altar hoping she'll never change. He loves her just the way she is. He wants that baby doll figure to stay. He wants everything to be just like it is. And the woman marries him thinking, well, he's okay, but I can change him. I can make him into something. Amen. Amen. 